we've been talking about this for quite a while, uh, but it, but it's it's worth constantly repeating because constantly people keep. I mean, this is in the news constantly. Uh, you know, the threat that is China. China is this mighty industrial powerhouse. Mighty is this competitor to the United States. This mighty industrial engine. Um, and, and, and people admire China. And people are afraid of China. And, and China's going through really, really, really difficult economic times right now. China's economy is really being pummeled. <laughs> and there's very little discussion of this. I mean, we need to put tariffs on China because China's going to do what to us? China is really struggling, much worse than we are, in, in real terms. And, and remember, any numbers coming out of China are suspect in terms of GDP. Oh, you know, we just reported GDP growth in the United States. So you remember the jobs numbers, uh, 800,000 fewer jobs were created than what was initially reported. Well, it turned out GDP growth was better than what was initially reported. So these things, uh, it, instead of 2.8, the economy grew in, I guess, the first quarter, 3%. That's pretty damn good. 3%, uh, that's on an annual basis, not in one quarter, 3%. It's, you know, given, this, given the economy, given the, 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 the debt, given the growth of government and regulations and everything else, the U.S. economy probably can grow much faster than 3% given, given everything that's going on, um, given the role of government in the economy today. It, it didn't grow any faster under Trump. And... This is about how fast it can grow. This is the upside. And, and let's coming out of a recession and things like that. But uh, it could grow much, much faster under freedom, but we don't have freedom. Uh, China's claiming 5% economic growth, but nobody believes that. It's probably significant below that. But that does not really show what's actually going on. We have huge deficits and a real debt problem, particularly at the federal level in this country. China's is much bigger. China's uh, uh, non-financial debt to GDP ratio is 300% right now, which is nuts. Um, it, it, this is not something that they can uh, pay off. This is not something they can easily deal with. Indeed, they basically told their state government, their provincial governments, sell everything. And indeed, that's what they're doing. They're, they're trying to sell everything in order to reduce their debt. Much of this debt is held by cities and counties and provinces and whatever they call them in China. So much of this debt is, uh, is, being, is held by what we would consider state and local and county governments and city governments. But it's still debt that has to be paid somehow. And it is slowing down economic growth. It is restricting how where money flows, and it, it is unbelievably destructive to, uh, to the Chinese economy. And China's in real trouble. Not pretend trouble, real trouble. Um, right now, the situation, for example, with um, the real estate market is so bad. So many Chinese homeowners are underwater. That is, they owe more on their mortgages than the value of their homes. And they're walking away from homes. That China is considering the government, in a sense, subsidizing a massive refinancing of uh, of mortgages. F they're talking about five point trillion, five point four trillion dollars, not yuan, dollars, to refinance mortgages all over China, which they hope will then give cons uh, you know Chinese um, Chinese households breathing space. Because they'll write down their write down their mortgages, their payments will be much lower, and then they'll be able to go out, hopefully, according to the Chinese, and spend money because they want to increase consumption. Uh, what this basically says is a lot of the mortgage banks, the banks that finance these mortgages, are basically bust without this massive government bailout. We thought the government bailout of 2008 was big. It's nothing. In the United States, it's nothing as, what, as compared to what the Chinese are going to be doing now. Uh, so they're basically, the central bank is basically going to 
low on mortgage costs, basically subsidize the complete refinancing of homes in uh, China. At the same time, office buildings in China are sitting empty. Now, in America and, and Western Europe, a lot of office buildings are sitting empty because of um, remote work. But remote work is not that popular in China. Most of these businesses are sitting empty because of the economic slowdown, because companies are not hiring, because there's massive unemployment among, um, what do you call it, uh, working age adults, particularly young adults. Kids coming out of college cannot find jobs. Uh, you know, office vacancy rates in Beijing, Guangzhou, Shanghai, and even Shenzhen, Shenzhen, which is like the hub of tech in China, the growth city, uh, they're, they're, they're higher now than they were in June 2022. June 2022 was in the peak of Chinese nationwide lockdowns. If you remember, they, they locked down whole cities. Rents are 10% lower than they were two years ago in 2022. Uh, and this is not, as I said, this is not because of, uh, of remote work like it is in, I don't know, London and San Francisco. This is all about economic slowdown, not hiring, companies not growing, companies shrinking, holding back, restraining. Not good, not a good sign for economic growth. So the bottom line is, while China remains a, a real national security threat, um, even there I think it's overstated because China is too poor to really engage with war with America. It's just too poor. If you look at a per capita GDP in China, it's still a poor country. Certainly relative to Europe and the United States and Japan and South Korea, it's a poor country. GDP per capita, the wealth of the individuals in China. Um, it has a robust middle class that don't want to become poor, even in their own terms. Does China really want to go to war and risk losing that war, uh, risk losing lives, risk, risk spending gazillions of dollars, risk destroying its own infrastructure, um, at the risk of all these middle class people then blaming the government for all this? Unlikely. So I think war with China is very unlikely. But still, it's, it's, it's got a large nuclear stockpile. It's definitely preparing for an attack on Taiwan. It is building up military capabilities. Uh, it's building up military capabilities that the United States needs to match and needs to be able to address. All of that is a, a, unbelievably true. But I think it is a crucial mistake to view China as this superpower on the rise, you know, going to beat everybody, is, you know, robust economy, is going to crush us economically, going to funnel all that money into, uh, into its weapon system, and just going to crush the West. It's just not happening. It's just not happening and, and not unlikely to happen. Um, because it's struggling economically and going to continue struggling economically. And I've predicted this, what, five, six years ago, when I first figured out how bad Xi was, I predicted this. Uh, authoritarianism doesn't work. The immoral is the impractical. The immoral in politics is impractical. And the consequence of his authoritarianism, his consequence of his going after the tech industry, is the consequence of him centralizing everything or centralizing a lot of uh, science and tech and guiding science and tech is going to be, econ and, and, and the idea of growing economically at all costs, that is not growing economically, growing GDP at all costs. GDP can grow if you just throw money at certain projects. If you, if you pay a bunch of people to dig holes and fill them back in, GDP will grow. And that's what the Chinese have done. And they're paying the consequences for that. And this is predictable. And nothing's changed. That is, the mentality of the Chinese is not gone, of the Chinese leadership is not gone, oh, okay, so it turns out we should have known this, but it turns out statism doesn't work, socialism doesn't work, central planning doesn't work, we should move back towards free markets. 
That is not what's happening in China. And as a consequence, that is not, um, it, China's not going to be an economic threat. It's not going to be a, 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 it's not going to be this all powerful economic entity out there that is somehow going to screw America. I mean, it can't anyway, because all it does with America economically is trade, which is win win, uh, which is much more fundamental. But it's struggling in every respect. And, and we need to stop viewing it as somehow successful, because when we view it as successful, we want to emulate it. And much of the Biden and Trump agenda regarding tariffs, regarding uh, industrial policy, bringing manufacturing home, all of that is based on this notion that they have all the good jobs. They manufacture stuff we don't. They have it right and we've got it wrong. It's just not true. They were both screwed. They are much more screwed than we are. And if we want to fix our problems, it's not by imitating an economy that is more screwed up than our economy is. So stop the subsidies, stop the central planning, stop the industrial policy, stop bringing manufacturing jobs home. We don't need them. Stop this mimicking of China. It got us into trouble during COVID and it will get us into trouble economically. They are a disaster economically because they subsidize, because it's top down, because they have industrial planning, because they want to manufacture everything for the world instead of letting it be organic. That is, let the market drive these decisions. If we adopt their policies, if we adopt their policies, we will become as bad as they are. And we don't want that. We don't want to be poor like them. And we don't want to be, have an economy that's as sick as their economy, as bad as our economy is. And it's, it's got real bad points. As sick as our economy is, and it is sick, and it's, it's, it's getting sicker, and there are lots of problems. We talk about them on this show. We'll talk about them more, I promise. China's in a much, much worse situation. We don't want to mimic anything that they do. And indeed, we want to do the opposite of what they do particularly under this regime in China.